Welcome into Conversations with Paul Brown. Today we are up in Liberty, and we have two guys who are our guests, Rick Brown and his son, Ethan. And it's Ethan's story we're going to tell, but Rick's going to help do it. Went to school at Liberty High School, um, and of course graduated there, and he had no issues medically until later in life. He's always played football, basketball, baseball, and karate, all the way till he finished school. Also, in rec ball, I would help coach, and just always wanting to go, miss those times when we didn't have games. Anytime you can watch your child get out and perform and have fun, uh, it's always a great experience. He starts going to uh, Tri-County Tech, looking to uh, transfer to Clemson, and then what did, that, what did he want to do? Uh, like most kids, he probably didn't really know, but uh, kind of graphic design is kind of okay. what he was leaning towards. Okay. You know, he was sick before he got out of high school, but he got better. So he was diagnosed in uh, 2008 with neurofibromatosis, type two, which means that tumors grow wherever you have nerves. And his were growing mainly on his brain stem and up and down his spine. And of course, we didn't know that until age 16 when he was diagnosed. After he had his first surgery, and right before that, his balance become very unstable because of the pressure on the brain stem. So we had to do a lot of things for him, help dress him, and uh, sometimes help feed him, and do a lot of things that most young people would not want their parents to have to do. Been in the insurance business for all those years, I had never run across anybody who had this disease, and it's pretty rare. Uh, so we did a lot of research and talking to a lot of different people and we eventually ended up going to Duke for uh, four of the five surgeries that he's had. And what were those surgeries like? How long were you, would you spend in the hospital? Uh, very, I mean, 10 to 12 hour surgeries. Um, he would always have to come back and do rehab, but the last one he had, he ended up spending six months in the hospital. And then at some point, he's proficient with texting and the phone and all yes. that kind of stuff. And what does he do that brings some other people into his life. Um, he lost his hearing, so his only really means of communication is to text. So uh, he gets on Facebook and social media, and he tells his story. And by telling his story, he has brought a lot of people into his life, and he's impacted a lot of people just telling his story and how he's dealt with the hand that he's been dealt and how he's gone through it and trusted in God and, and putting it in his hands. And one of those that responded to his request for prayer was who? Was Ian Desmond back in 2012. He was a, an outfielder, third baseman, a shortstop, different positions with the Washington Nationals. And later that year, he invited us when they came to play Atlanta to come and meet him. And from then, it's, it's really been history. Uh, Ethan and him become very good friends. Um, he's been to our home. He's hunted with us through the Outdoor Dream Foundation. He's just done a lot of wonderful things for Ethan and also for the Children's Tumor Foundation who is looking for a cure for neurofibromatosis. To the extent that uh, they've gotten so close, they share a tattoo. Yes, yeah. And uh, if you get a chance to uh, look at the book, there's a, there's a uh, picture of the tattoo. Um, but it's... Uh, it's remarkable that a professional baseball player would take the time to be friends with a, a person he didn't know and then them having the same tattoo. Other people came into Ethan's life to help brighten his life, and one of them was the Outdoor Dream Foundation. Tell me about your relationship with Coach Jones and Brad and that organization. A friend of ours, Sam Kelly, uh, introduced us to Brad Jones and the Outdoor Dream, and I think uh, probably about a month later, we were in Utah, and Ethan got him a big old elk, and from that point, the Outdoor Dream has just done wonderful things for Ethan as well as all the kids in this area. What other hunts has he been on besides the elk? Gator hunt, turkey, a hog, fish, and a lot of deer hunts down in Anderson County. Uh, he's fished with the Clemson basketball team down at Portland Marina. 
you know, it's not like make a wish where you just get one wish and it's done. They just, it's the gift that keeps on giving. And as a result of that, did, did he and Desmond do some stuff together in outdoors? Yes, after a few years of his relationship with uh, Ian, uh, he came down and actually hunted with uh, Brad Jones and down in Anderson County. And Ian was able to get his first deer that he had ever killed. Ethan was wanting him to enjoy what he's been able to receive on the other end. How did the book come about? A lot of people just kept telling Ethan through social media that he should share his story. And so he decided to write a book. And I said, well, go for it. Uh, so two and a half years later, and he was actually uh, writing it on his cell phone, one thumb at a time because of his vision and his balance. And finally, he, he got it finished and we was able to get it published. And, and what was your involvement with it? Uh, my involvement was mainly the right to check to get the <laughs> book published. Um, he did everything. He wrote everything in this book in his own words. And it's a story of what he experienced growing up as a child up until this point here. The good times, the bad times, and all the things that people has done for him, uh, like the outdoor dream and, and of course Ian Desmond helping him out. But it's a really good read based on if you don't like to read books a lot, a lot of people can read this book and, and they don't want to put it down. Tell me about the front cover. All right, so the front cover is, of course, the tattoo that him and Ian Desmond share. Uh, and then, of course, Ian Desmond, is, he does the foreword in the, in the book. Lucid Book Company is the company that we chose, and they are a Christian-oriented company, and that's what we wanted because this is a, you know, inspiring uh, book that talks about Ethan and you know, a lot of biblical scripture in the book that relates to everyday life. The Fight of My Life by Ethan Brown. Brown. And where can folks get it? Amazon, uh, Books a Million, Barnes and Noble. When you and your wife saw the final product, what was your reaction to what Ethan had been able to do? I was kind of blown away because writing a book's not easy. And coming up with stuff to continue on, and, and I didn't read until it was done. I knew kind of what was in there, but I didn't really want to read it until it was done. And, you know, I read it, you know, in about three hours. And, you know, you cry some, you laugh some, and um, I just really enjoyed the book. Besides Desmond, the Major League Baseball player, were there other people of note that got in touch with Ethan during his, his battle? Yes, there were several people, and Ethan talks about it in his book, and let me just read you a couple of them here. Ethan says in his book, my football coach went to church with a few players from Clemson. So he was able to connect with some of those guys when he was in the hospital from his first surgery. And it was Willie Korn and Xavier Dye. They actually came to see him while he was in the hospital. C.J. Spiller was supposed to come, but he had gotten banged up in practice. But he did send a note by Xavier and Willie, and it, and it says, I quote, to Ethan Brown, I want you to know I have you in my prayers and I want you to keep your faith positive because our Lord and Savior will have his hands on you and everything will be fine. I hope to see you soon. Your number one fan, C.J. Spiller. And then also, later that night, he got a special phone call. And this was back in 2008 and it was from Tommy Bowden. And Tommy talked to Ethan. At this time, Ethan could still hear. So he hadn't lost his hearing yet. So he was able to get, have a conversation with Tommy about it. Uh, and also during this time of Ethan being sick, he got a lot of letters and a lot of support from a lot of people. And one of them is Coach Mark Rich. I recently heard of your illness and hope this letter finds you on the road to recovery. I tell our Bulldog players to work as hard as they can every day and not to give up in a game, no matter how tired they are. We call this finishing the drill. I know you will do this as you fight to beat this disease. The Bulldogs and I are pulling for you. God bless. So he's received a lot of people uh, that's just come and, and just done wonderful things for us as a family. It's, it's just amazing how people gravitate to Ethan. He's met Tim Tebow in person. A friend of ours, we talked to him about seeing can we meet Tim Tebow. We just happened to be doing an interview in Spartanburg. He was doing a fundraiser. And Ethan was actually able to meet him 
backstage and get pictures made with Tim. And he was an awesome guy too. Have you been surprised at the people that he's affected as a result of this? Yes, there's a lot of stories. Since the book has come out, people has written on Facebook. People has sent cards and letters after they read the book, uh, telling them how much the book has meant to them and how it's changed their life and gave them a new uh, perspective on life. When Ian Desmond, we met him the first time, we never had met him before. Ethan had been talking to him, you know, on text and, and Twitter. And Ethan had asked Desi, he said, have you ever touched a tumor before? And Desi said, no. And Ethan holds out his wrist and gets him to touch the tumor. And then Ethan goes, ah, like it hurt him. And Desmond says at that moment, he knew Ethan was going to be a friend of his. And he tells that story today. Yeah. And this was several years ago. Yeah. So. Uh, our, our plan now is Ethan's on uh, Avastin, which is a chemo drug that doesn't seem to be helping. These tumors are still slowly growing. So we have uh, talked to some doctors at John Hopkins and gotten some second opinions and, and we got referred to Wake Forest Baptist Hospital to see some new doctors up there. We went last month and we're going back next week to, to uh, just to see what other options we have. Our main concern is Ethan not to lose his vision. His, his hearing is pretty much gone, nothing they can do about it. But we want to save his vision and, and if trying new chemos, uh, new drugs, new whatever surgeries that may be available, but that's what we want to do to try to help Ethan during this battle. How do you communicate with him now? Now we do sign language, like this means I love you. It's different uh, sign language. Uh, we can text. Uh, and that's pretty much it. His vision is kind of limited, so you have to be pretty close to him just to be able for him to see you. What kind of activities could you and the, as a family still do? Well, we are limited to some degree, but one of the things we can still do is, is go hunting. And a lot of great people will allow Ethan to go turkey hunting, deer hunting, we can go fish. We have to assist Ethan, but it's still something we can do as a family. If Desmond is playing in Atlanta, we'll go down and see him and go as a family. I know, Ricky, this has been a lot about your son. What have you and your wife taken from the challenge that has come your way? Well, it's a lot harder than what most people realize when you basically take care of someone 24-7. So it's a lot that people, a lot of things behind the scenes you don't see. But, but we know that God's got a reason, God's got a plan, and He's used Ethan's life, even though it's not the life that he would want, but his life has uh, benefited a lot of other people. And one day he's not going to be like this. That's right. One day he'll be running around and seeing better and, and hearing, and you know, there's a, definitely a better life coming. Our guests on this week's Conversations with Paul Brown has been Rick and Ethan Brown. We want to thank them for sharing their story with us. And as they continue to face life in their special way. And we would invite all of you to be back with us next week, same time, for our next edition of Conversations with Paul Brown. Until then, take care, everybody. <laughs>